Hi, I'm Brennan. I'm the head of delivery team. Um, and today we're going to be thinking about how AI can help with elder care. Um, Anthony, did you want to talk about what you know about this topic? Yeah, well, you know, we've worked with a lot of customers that have aging um, patients and aging customers, and it's a common topic for us. So we want to talk yeah, a little bit about AI elder care and, how, you know, how we think this might be an increasingly important topic uh, in the U.S. and worldwide. So this is a graph of the U.S. population pyramids. So this basically shows how many people are in each age group in the U.S. And if you skip ahead five years at a time, what you're seeing is that the baby boomers and then the millennials slowly creep up and the average population age is just going to continue to get older and older and older and never get better. So the, the percentage of the of the U.S. that's aging is just we know this because these people have been born already. Uh, it's just going to get worse, right? And if we go to like a country like I don't know um, China, where thirty years of one child made it so that we have a very old population. If we mm -hmm. skip ahead, it gets, it gets more and more dire. They call it the one two four problem, where you have this really 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 heavily aged population by twenty fifty nine here. Um, we're actually probably more than half the population is at retirement age. Um, and this is this is not like specific to any one country, but some certainly have worse situations than others. Um, and um, in addition to just there being more older people, you know, you can see that like the, the number of workers per beneficiary, so for instance, this is Social Security through 2040. We're gonna, right now we have about almost um, three and a half people. Uh, for supporting mm -hmm. every retired person on social security by 2040 is going to be two and it's only going to get worse as the population gets older um mm -hmm. and if you think about healthcare, um so if we actually look at the distribution of healthcare across your age almost all your healthcare costs are spent in the later years of life and so it gets even magnified further by that and you know we have obviously made strides in terms of trying to use technology to better serve aging populations but not very much and we have stuff like life alert where it's like, okay, you have an elderly uh, parent or grandparent who's by themselves and you're worried what will happen if, if they have a health emergency and there's no one there to help them. Um, the problem is this is very reactive. You, um, so I don't know, um, you, you get what I mean, Brennan? Like, like reactive versus proactive here? Yeah, like this is like solving the issue like once it's kind of happened. And so I'm kind of curious like for you, like, what would you think would be ways where like voice AI could help in a situation like this? With reactive situations? Proactive, like how could we maybe in advance um, better care for like loved ones, especially as yeah. the situation ages? Yeah, I think we could definitely like be reaching out to them more frequently and doing some like more preemptive screenings to prevent, you know, something happening down the line. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of what we, we imagine is just that, you know, if you, proactively had um you know a system calling a loved one rather than waiting for them to you know press an emergency button and just checking yeah. it about their health care about their medication and about how they're feeling you could maybe identify issues before they elevate to the point of emergent yeah. health care and also like you know give you peace of mind um especially you know as as an increasing percentage of the population has to mm -hmm. um care for, for folks like that so we thought we would put together just a quick thought to show what we mean I'm going to say Grace works for, you know, healthcare or elder care and um, for space care. And we're going to say that she's very empathetic, very articulate, and, and maybe somewhat chatty because, you know, this is a check-in call. And um, we'll go ahead and make a bot here. Um, and so we'll say, okay, hello. Mr. Can I just say Mr. Name? Um, how are you? Um, all right, do you say hello? Are you like, do, do you have a minute to chat today? And we can say yes, no, and we'll just quit the export for now. Um, Great. Um, so, Mr. I just wanted to ask a quick couple of questions. Um, how are you feeling today? 
Um, has there been any change in your health? Um, what did you do this week? Um, have you been taking all your medications? You know, they're common wellness questions that we yeah. might want to do. Um, and, and we can maybe be like, great, you're all done. Anything else you wanted to tell me about? Um, great. And so we just call this, um, this is an outcome done with survey. And you could call out to everyone, you know, that subscribes to your service or everyone yeah. in your in your in your healthcare system. And it's a very simple bot. It's just three questions. And so we can start a coaching session, select that bot. My name is Mr. Scuderi. And so I'm gonna take off my um well, actually should be able to do this in front of the um, do you hear me okay? Yep. Great. Hello, Mr. Nunn. Great. So, Mr. Nunn, I just want to ask a quick couple questions. How are you feeling today? Um, well, I've been feeling pretty well. Uh, no issues, really. No complaints. Has there been any change in your health? Well, I have noticed my heart rate has been kind of elevated recently, especially when I'm going upstairs. What did you do this week? Sorry, I didn't hear that. What did you say? No problem. I just asked what you did this week. Oh, this week? Well, I played in a pickleball tournament, and I did fall. And, well, I do think I may have hurt my uh, my ankle or my shin. Have you been taking all your medication? Um, sorry, could you say that again? It's The TV's on, and I can't hear very well. I'm sorry for the confusion, but I just wanted to know if you've been taking all your medications. Well, you know what? Um, one of my medications that I take for my heart, uh, I, they were out of it at the pharmacy. So it's, a, it's all right. I don't mind. I just don't need to take it this month. Great. You're all done. Anything else you wanted to tell me about? Uh, well, actually, could you uh, call my uh, grandson and let him know that I need help with you know, getting back to the pharmacy? Sorry, but I'm unable to call your grandson. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss with me today? Well, in that case, no. Thank you. All right. So, I don't know, Brennan, what do you think about that? Yeah, that was, I mean, that was good. That that did bring up another question that I was wondering what your thoughts were. Um, obviously, the elderly population is a little less familiar with AI and with voice tech in general. Um, how do you think... Well, what do you think some of the challenges are in introducing this technology to that generation, especially in terms of just like general transcription and understanding, um, especially like, you know, if the person is struggles understanding grace as well? Yeah, well, I mean, as you know, a lot of the kind of uh, healthcare customers we have when we call elderly patients, we identify, hey, I'm a virtual agent, I'm a machine You're calling to help you. And either they don't understand or they don't hear and they still think they're talking to a person. And I think if we're doing our job, you know, if one, you keep the, the calls task oriented, and two, you make it so that it shouldn't matter if they know or not. Ideally, you know, you try to make it so they understand you're talking to a machine. But like the most important thing is that the calls flow well, they can understand. Grace will repeat things for them. Grace will uh, verify information. And yeah. that's that's been a big part of it, as you know. Yeah, that's great. Well, is this is this a, a kind of good introduction to AI elder care with uh, grid space? Yeah, uh, this is very helpful. Thank you so much for all your explanation, Anthony. All right. Well, well, thanks, Brennan. We'll uh, we'll talk again soon. Sounds good. Bye.